so the next topic is add enhancement technique so why do you need the enhancement technique we'll see first okay so now whenever the circuit is smaller right in the sense uh, if the adders are of size uh, say 8 to 10 bits right smaller size even for say, up to 16 bits right normally uh, we adopt the ripple hardware okay so carry to be passed through the ripple through carry in the sense every stage will calculate its carry and that carry will be passed on to the next level yeah okay so that's the normal technique using which the carry propagates in the circuit okay yeah. that's the simple simple circuit so we'll write for see simple adders right yeah you can say up to 8 or 16 bits right normally what we do is that right we go for we select the this is called as ripple okay we call ripple through ripple through carry circuit right now it means if you have say n bit adder yeah. the time required for the nth bit result right is nothing but it depends upon the propagation time you can say that it is actually directly proportional to the number of adders you have or number of bits you have that is equal to n right why it is because let's simply go back to our previous case like this let's assume okay so in this case you see now though i have given all the four digits as input simultaneously a1 a2 a, sorry a0 a1 a2 a3 and b0 b1 b2 b3 all of them let me assume that i have given as input simultaneously right now my question is whether you get the output also output in the sense the s1 s0 s1 s2 s3 which you can see at the bottom of the address right so the question is that whether you are going to get those answers also simultaneously or not are you waiting for the output of the previous stage which one which is the output of which is the output of the previous stage that you are waiting for carry right perfect so you see that okay right so you see that adder one's output depends upon the previous carry to reach that stage then only it will generate s1 and c1 okay whereas adder 2 will keep waiting for the c1 to come c1 will come only when c1 gets c0 right that adder gets a c0 right c0 will come only when you have a c in present right and so on so it means you, you see the last adder how much time it waits it waits until all the previous uh, adders generate their carries correct so that means the idea is now straightforward it has to wait right it has to wait for some time right the delay is caused because of that now when we say okay there is a delay of that much how how do you justify how do you quantify that delay delay is proportional to the number of adders you have right the the 
obviously correct uh, it also depends on the number of inputs and number of uh, number of inputs basically uh, so depending upon the size of inputs you have so many adders right 4 bit means you need four adders correct so 8 means 8 adders so eighth adder will wait the time waiting time for that will be proportional to 8 because there are 8 adders right all the adders should get the carry generated then only the last adder can perform the calculation correct right now we will go for the carry completion time this implies right we said that okay simple adders you have ripple through carry ripple through carry means carry will be generated from one adder will goes to the next that's it it's a rippling through carry is rippling through each of the adders that's why it is ripple through carry okay the one which we already have studied is called as ripple through carry okay now so let us say uh, what is the carry completion time so therefore therefore the carry completion time in a sense to calculate the final carry the carry out okay so the carry completion time is now proportional to to the number of adders correct number of adders that is equal to n if you have n adders you have to wait for a time is equal to n okay all right now let us say we have a large number of adders right so if n is large so that is say 32 or maybe 64 bit 128 bits and so on if you have a large number of okay large number of adders are because the current architecture of our computers is that you are following 32 bit architecture 64 and so on right when you have large number of this right the waiting time increases right this wait waiting time increases every addition everything you have to wait so much amount of time okay waiting time increases as what is the reason as the carry has to ripple through each adder correct now so in order to reduce this computational time right there are some special techniques adopted okay so this in the sense you want to uh, reduce the time definitely there will be increase in the complexity of the circuit okay so we'll see them now so in order to in order to reduce the complexity uh, sorry not complexity in order to reduce the computation time computation actually the complexity will increase now okay in order to reduce the waiting time special special circuits are built we have built special circuits but are complex uh, 
complex and since the circuits are complex they take up more area because you have more number of transistors or more number of gates associated with it okay so what are the special techniques that have been evolved so far right they are like this the first circuit is called as carry select adder okay so the first one under this case is called as the carry adders right so here the adder will be normally divided into several blocks so the first let's see uh, what what is the basic required to be understood before we go for a circuit right so here the adder gets divided into several blocks right how much quicker you want to calculate you divide them into so many number of blocks you can see that as the number of blocks increase there is increase in the overall complexity okay now when you divide each adder into several block what is there inside each adder so each uh, sorry each block each block is made up of two different adders one with the logical zero as the carry in and the second block will always takes one as the carry in all right so each block each block is made up of say two different adders All right so each adder when it, when we say there are two adders the first adder with logical zero as carry in okay and another with logical one that is a high signal okay as carry in okay so we have two parts now so the sum and carry generated are then selected by the actual carry which comes into the carry out of the output of your previous loop okay so you have to select which carry or you have both options readily available with you you don't have to wait for the calculation now because if one comes i know the answer readily available with me because one of the block is carry is considering the sum with the zero as carry other circuit will calculate the same sum with one as the carry right so you have both available with you you just have to select which one is your required answer okay so anyway when we write the circuit this becomes clear all right the sum and the carry out generated
are then selected by actual gas. Actual carry carry in which comes carry out of the previous block. Right. Now we'll go for a diagram just to understand that how this works. Okay, now let's look at our circuit first. So let's say we have uh, say four or five bits, five bits of adder. Okay, fine. Let me start with the rightmost one. So I want to write All right. Let me start from this side. So let's let's consider two adder elements. Okay, the first adder element will be this one. This is adder element number one. And I also have another adder element for for the same. Okay. So let us assume that these two adder elements will collect the first bits of each input. This is for first one, this is for the second one. Okay, now let me give the names. This is say A1, B1 and A0 B not. You see that the first few, uh, what you call, first few of the blocks, you might not require the carry select option. This is because, right? They, they are, they are at the initial stage. They will, there will not, there will be no delay associated with the first few blocks. Okay. So because of that reason, you are not going to uh, consider the adder element, two two adder elements for each of them. Okay, so what we do now, we'll uh, simply write them as the adder element. This is the other adder element. So let us say that we have an incoming carry from this side. Okay, so this is the carry C in and from this stage we have the C naught which is going out to the next stage, right? So we have the outputs coming from each of the blocks. I'll call this is say the S naught and S one. All right. Now you see this carry will select whether you want to have the sum with the zero as a selector or one as a selector, right? We need to have a selector available now. Okay, so let's draw the selector part now. So let us assume that from this block, I have a carry that is coming out. But okay, before that, let me draw the other two blocks needed. So the first block is like this. 
So let us say there is one adder block here. This generates one output and let me consider another block. Okay, now uh, each of these blocks, each of these blocks will be calculating the outputs considering that whether there is a zero input, you can have a zero as input or you can have one as input. You, you have the values readily available for you. Okay, that's why. So for one of the block, it will take zero as input. The other block will take one as the input. Okay, assuming that, okay, these are, this is how the carry takes place. Okay, now, so let us say this is one as input and this has zero as input. That's the carry, right? We, we, we mentioned that, okay, each of the block is going to have this kind of arrangements. And so A1, B1 is over. I have to give A2 and B2 as the other two inputs. All right, so this gets, say, one of the input. This is the input for B and let us say this is the input for A. And the same should go to the next one as well, right? So you can see that. Okay. So same thing, it's going to be present for them. So I'll just take a connection from here. It's taken from here and the similar fashion, I'm taking another connection from here. Okay, now both of them are being connected to the second block. All right. Similarly, this is also connected to this block. All right. Now, anyway, I'll give the name later because if possible, I'll definitely copy this to the next level. All right. So then uh, there is a multiplexer that is being used. So below this, I'm, I'm going to write, say, a multiplexer. This is a multiplexer circuit. Mux we can write. So the, what the mux performs is each of these blocks are going to generate one output. One output comes from this and one more output will come from this. Out of these two, which one you want to select? All right. So which output you actually have to select will be decided now. Okay. So that will be the decision. So the decision will be decided by this mux. So let's say this is the output. Now, we have, when I say this is a mux, right? I'll, I'll write the name now. This is the... adder element and this is two input mux or multiplexer okay we need an output to be decided for this so what we do now uh, okay first let me copy this so that we can use the same block again later so this is the block which uh, repeats now okay Okay, so let's move this over here. All 
okay so now let's make the connections for the second block as well so there is uh, this is the adder and this is a tool input box now see the connection so from the previous stage we have a carry that is coming out right so that carry so this is that carry this is the carry so the carry which comes from the previous stage this is the carry okay that's coming out from the previous stage now we are going to use that itself as the select line for them so now you see this is connected to this as a select line so i'll write this as the c1 okay now i have to use another select line for my two marks which is written over here so now this becomes b2 and a2 similarly you have b3 and a3 okay so each of this adder element will be used for the next next stage so the next stage you can write it in the following fashion so before that i need a select line to come so what i do i'll extend the same select line which i have selected so far okay so that means this line which is already here you can take this signal and give this to the next level next layer I'll, I'll just keep it here so let me say that this will be the s2 and this will be the s3 so i need a select line for my mux here so let's do like this so it actually will be collected from here and given this as a select line for this okay so this is the select line here also you are using the c1 as the select lines right so this generates now we have the signals coming out from the previous stages so when i say i have a signal that is generated from my previous stage right you can have either zero as input or one as right for every stage you have this okay now this will be given as an output to the next stage if at all you are drawing another set of signals like this then you see you are going to use the same thing for the next stage what i do i'll draw a another mux over here okay we'll draw another mux over here and through that mux we'll try to take out the c3 the carry the carry which is going to come out all right so let's write another mux over here i'll write a two input mux so from where you are getting the two inputs both inputs one of the input will come from the top and the second input is going to come from this so two inputs will come they will all together generate an output so i'm going to call this is c3 okay now where is the select line i need a select line for this box this itself will be used as the select line right so like this you have the carry that is coming out so if you want a c note you can take the signal from here itself okay so this looks like a c note for you right Similarly, the C1 can also be generated in the same fashion, right? I know that I already marked C1, right? 
like this. So whatever you get now, this circuit itself is called as the carry select adder structure. Okay, so all the four bits are generated in this way. So since each adder or each block has two adders and both adders will perform and keep the answer ready for whether you want to carry zero circuit or carry one circuit, right? You don't have to wait for the carry to come, right? So as soon as you give the initial carry, all the outputs are going to come at the same time. So that's why it is the simultaneous, right? Outputs will come simultaneously. But the cost is that you are going to draw double circuits. Everywhere you have two, two adders. So total complexity is increased over here. Okay. Now, how the optimization happens in this? Okay. So that concept is called as optimization. Optimization of carry select adder. Okay, so when we say there is a optimization that is happening with this, so let us consider that uh, we have uh, a n bit adder, okay, ripple carry adder. So let there be n bits in a Ripple carry adder. Okay, so you say that there is a n bit ripple carry adder. Now, when you say that there is a ripple carry adder, uh, the the computation time, the Computation time capital T is given by K1 into N. So, where what is K1? K1 call is called as the delay of each adder. So, there are N adders, and each adder generates a delay of. K1. Right. Now, if we divide the adder into several blocks and each with the two parallel paths, right, then let us calculate the time now. Okay. So, in the next point, if the adder block get divided into two adders right each block gets divided into two adders okay two adders with now how many parallel paths we know that there are many parallel paths available so what is the what's the number of parallel paths two parallel paths so with with two parallel parts, then 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 the computation time changes now. So T becomes equal to now you see the updated value it is K1 into n by 2 plus K2. So K1 is the delay associated with each of the block. Now K2 is the time needed by that multiplexer of the next block to select the actual output. Right. So here where K1 we already defined. So we'll define only K2. So K2 is the 
time needed by the multiplexer by the mux to select actual output so we have both outputs available the both outputs in the sense one output for zero as a carry in one more for the one as carry -in. so irrespective of whatever whatever the blocks get generated it's going to select only one output right that is the actual output so how much time is required for that that is this now let us further go ahead from this right let us say that you are going to divide the n bit adder into m different blocks so if a this is n n bit adder is divided into it is divided into say capital m number of blocks if this is divided into this then let's also assume that each block has p number of each block has capital p number of adders okay adders in series right then we can write uh, what's the total gain right series then the total delay consists of two parts so what is the first part of the delay first part of delay is through the first block and the second part is through the multiplexer so that is propagation delay of the adder blocks and the second one is the propagation delay of the mux right now so propagation delay of the first part right that is uh, we can write therefore the capital t is equal to the first part is there are p times k1 plus m minus 1 is the mux number of muxes you use into k2 okay so now we know that the number of bits n but i can write but the number of bits n is equal to m times p right you can calculate in this fashion so that we can actually uh, find the minimum value of p right this is the this is the how you calculate uh, the minimum delay t is nothing but under root this is n times k1 by k2 so you just have to apply this to find the minimum amount of delay that is generated by a given circuit you will not be able to reduce this further okay so that's what is called as the carry select adder right then the second type of circuit which we have to use to improve the delay time associated with the any given adder circuit right it is called as 
in the carry skip adder. Right now, uh, say the propagation delay may be actually because of some of your the, the input numbers at some location you may get a carry at some other location you may not get a carry right whenever you add some numbers right at some positions you may get a carry at some other positions you may not get a carry so wherever you don't have a carry right you can simply pass the carry calculations over there right so that technique right which which skips the calculation of the carries when not required is called as a carry skip adder right so the adder circuit which skips the calculations for the operand bits which do not generate any carry when added okay is called as carry skip adder right so whenever you add you see that there may not be a okay. case so let's take an exam okay let's consider the number numbers like this let's say this is a a is one zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero one one zero one 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 okay let's say this is the first number and uh, now uh, we'll add a second number to this okay so this is a now let's write b so b is assumed to be like this so this is 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 one zero zero then let's assume zero 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 okay right now you see the calculation goes in this fashion so you simply do the addition right one plus zero is one one plus zero is this one plus zero is zero plus zero is that now whenever you add this whenever you get a you have all zeros all the same numbers whenever you change the number you say that you are generating that position so we say that you are actually generating a zero here this is called as generation of zero okay so zero plus zero it means the carry is generated will be zero after this anyway so this is one this is 1, this is 1. So 0 plus 0 is 0. So this is where you call this. So you see this, you are not doing anything. This is called as a pass. So you are passing, you are not doing it. Then once again, you see 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus this is 1, this is also 1, this is also 
1 until you get 1 plus 1 you are actually not doing anything there is no carry generated so you call that as pass but now you see when there is a 1 plus 1 right the answer becomes equal to 0 and you have a carry coming out so this is generate a carry right of 1 so that is generate 1 so after that now you see this is 1 plus 1 is 0 the 1 comes here so 1 plus 1 is a 0 and 1 comes here so then 1 plus 1 0 1 plus 1 0 1 plus 1 0 and this right so you generate a 1 after this and you left you leave everything this is also a pass so the representation is that whenever you have the input carry coming in if input carry comes in you will do the addition like this but if the input carry is zero this is how you do the calculation okay so we understood the concept let's directly uh, go ahead and write the required circuit okay so will write a structure of twenty four bit carry skip add. Okay, now let's write one block and uh, we can copy the same thing in the next. Alright, so this is one block and Say so there is another block like this, and we need a third block over here. Okay, the connections are made like this. And we are giving six inputs from this side. Okay, then uh, they are connected to the box in the following way.
now this is two blocks so two inputs and one select line okay and the select line basically comes from the bottom it is from here to here okay now this structure we are going to repeat several times so let me simply copy this first Okay, now this is copied further like this. Okay, now we'll copy this one more time so that we get all the 24 bits coming in place. Okay, so that generates this final circuit. All right, so therefore. Okay, now the initial carry that is going to be generated will be coming from this side. Okay, so we'll mark that part first. So this is how the initial carry will be generated. So this will be called as the C in. carry in will go to this so its output is what will be connected to the next stage like this right now let's write try to write this now so the inputs are coming in this fashion so this is zeroth bit this is bit number zero this is the bit number five so 0 to 5 okay then this there is a 2 input max over there and you perform the XOR operation and operation so because we know that XOR and uh, the AND operations are important for us same thing this comes to the second stage now so this starts from bit number 6 goes till 11 once again you perform the xor and operation so this signal the output of the 
two marks will now come to the next stage like this. This is what is the stage. So that will generate. Okay. So the same structure will be coming to the next stage. After 11 to this, we have 12 to 17. Right? So you have XOR and operation. This generates another output. So to visualize the final six bits, we need one more copy of that. Okay, so I just paste it. Now this will be Okay, so now we'll move this to the left side so that we can arrange the outputs for bits starting with number 18 and it goes till 23. So since you started from uh, zeroth position, this will be considered as the 24 bit adder itself. Okay. This is the last. So you here you can see the input bits are actually starting from 18 and it will go till 23. So 24 bit total. So starting from 0 to 23 is total 24. Here I have another two marks. Right. This also get the same inputs from the previously calculated stage. The previous mux will generate its required inputs. And this is going to generate the final carry. So final carry will be generated by this stage. And you will call this as the final C out. So this is carry number 23. So we'll denote it as C. 2, 3. Right? This itself is what we can call as C out. Right? So each of the block is actually performing, right? When, when I said it's XOR and so what it is going to be performing is that there is a there is an AND operation also. So each block will write one thing here. Each block computes the following. So what is that? That is, so let us say we have six inputs. That is, one is A5. It's going to perform XOR with B5. Then there is an AND symbol. So AND is this AND operation. So dot, there is A4 xor with b4 dot a3 xor with b3 dot a2 xor with b2 so 5 4 3 2 dot we are also going to performing a1 xor with b1 dot a0 xor with B naught. So totally this whole product is what we are going to call this as pi. Pi is a product, right, of the term we'll write as pi. So pi means it's the XOR function. The product of many XOR functions is what you calculate. Right? So this is what is the uh, representation of the and symbol and the 
XOR symbol present over there. Okay, now let us see how the optimization happens inside this block. When we say we are using an XOR uh, function and the dot function like this, now we need to justify that, okay, this particular function is going to uh, simplify our target, right? So let's look at that concept now that is called as optimization. Optimization of carry skip. How the optimization happens in a carry skip or All right. Now, so this means, let us start with the propagation delay. So, in order to write a propagation delay, let's uh, look at the components. So, let say K1. What is K1? Time needed. This is the time needed by the carry signal to propagate through one adder cell. And let's denote another time that is K2. So this is the time needed for uh, carry to skip over a block. Time needed by carry to skip over any given block. All right. Now, what we do? We divide the whole n bits into m blocks. Okay. So let's then divide n is the total number of bits. So 24 bits indicate n equal to 24. All right. Now let us divide this. So let us say m is the number of blocks number of blocks and by default this uh, p the p value which we have written here is the number of adder cells in each block. So we mentioned that there are so many number of uh, m is the total number of blocks and in each of the block which we have seen now, right, we are saying that we have uh, so many number of adder cells. Okay, now, so considering this is the number, total number of cells we have here. N is the number of bits. Okay, and once you have N as the number of bits, The K2 is the total uh, time needed for the calculation. Variables uh, defined for uh, the optimization of the carry skip adder. All right. So here, what we do here uh, now is that we try to calculate the total propagation delay. 
right now so as in case of the what you call the ripple carry adder the actual computing time depends on the configuration of input numbers and the total completion time uh, will be very small right but it may reach to a very high value as well okay so considering the worst case we can write like this right uh, therefore the total propagation delay is now calculated as follows so that is capital T is equal to 2 times so this is T minus 1 times K1 so this is the number of times the carry signal propagates through an adder cell equal to this number okay so plus then there is m minus 2 times k2 right so m minus 2 blocks will be there through which it's going to pass to generate a uh, each one will generate a delay of k2 right so here you can see that the p is actually represented as n divided by m so we can calculate p whenever needed by using the following formula right and uh, the minimum minimum value of the t is calculated as minimum value of t implies t means you have to have m is equal to the root of 2 times n into k1 divided by k2 so in order to obtain the minimum value of the delay propagation delay you should have the m is equal to right n 2 times n k1 by k2 okay so that's the second type of circuit uh, which helps in calculation of in, in redu reducing the time required for calculation of the carry right but we can see that the complexity has been increased here okay then let's go further the third circuit is called as the CLA adder which is the carry look ahead Carry look ahead adder. So the idea is that we can try to write the carry in the following format. Right? So we already know that for a full adder block, for a single block, I can write the output carry CK is equal to the input AK BK plus the half adder half output that is hk into the previous carry that is ck minus 1 right but every ck i can try to write that using its previous value correct all right anyway let me write that uh, but so let me call this is one but so what is this c uh, okay uh, first let me write the hk then we'll substitute for ck Right, so we'll write in this way. But uh, okay, what is HK? HK is equal to if you remember, HK is equal to AK BK. Right plus this ak bk bar plus ak bar bk it's an xor function all right so this indicates i can try to write each of the arrays in this format so this is two so you can put uh, two in one to get the following notation this implies 
the CK is calculated as AK BK plus this is AK X or BK because the HK itself is AK X or BK. Okay, so AK X or BK into CK minus 1. Call this is equation number 3. Now, so let's write the C0 and C1 using this. This implies C0, if you want to calculate C0, you can simply write it in the following notation. This is A0 B0 plus A0 XOR with B0 into, so C0 minus 1 is nothing but this is C in. Okay, that is a C in. Now this C0 will go to the next level that is to generate C1 which is A1 B1 plus uh, this is A1 XOR with B1 times the previous carry that is C0. Right? Now you see that instead of C0 I can write the above equation itself. Correct? So that means I can write this. So let's let's write. So this is this is what I am going to call it as four. This is five. So this implies I am going to substitute four in five. Put equation number four in five. So when we do so, this implies I am going to get a C one as equal. Anyway, A1, B1 will be as it is, plus this is A1, X or with B1 into, look at the C0 term, C0 is nothing but this is A0, B0 plus this is A0, X or with B0 times C. So whatever is inside this square bracket is the C0. So instead of C0, I am simply substituting this one. That is substituted from fourth equation. Okay, so this itself is going to indicate that we can try to uh, understand that. So I without calculating C0, right? You just note this. So C1 can be previous, all the previous cases, all the previous circuits we are expecting C1 in terms of C0. So here also it says that C1 should be, if you want to calculate C1, I need the previous stage carry. Okay, but now you see here, this particular concept gives you a different idea that C1 can be calculated without any C0. There is no C0 in this. And also, you can see that it is... C1 also can be calculated directly from your input carry. So input carry is directly available. You don't have to wait for that to propagate through all the adders and come to the particular adder block. It is directly given whenever the inputs are provided to a circuit. So this is the idea that the carry, you can look ahead what carry you are going to get at a particular stage. But it's not a simple calculation. As the term increases, you can see that there will be more and more terms getting added up. Okay, so let's write the C1, C2 and C3 for our reference. But then we'll understand that how complicated it is. Okay, so C1 is equal to, now let, let me expand and write this. So this is A1, B1 plus A1 XOR with B1 into A0, B0. Okay, then you have plus the two XOR operations that is A1 XOR with B1 and it with A0 XOR with B0 these many times I should consider the C in. So this is nothing but C1. C1 is like this. Now what I do I use the C1 to get C2 and C3. Anyway yeah, you don't have to uh, remember this for the you can just say that so C1 can be directly calculated without C0 and using C1, C in here. But I just want to show that 
Similarly, you can calculate C2. Similarly, C2 can also be calculated in this way, but you can see the complexity. So this is A2 B2 plus this is A2 XOR with B2 times A1 B1 plus this is A2 XOR B2 into A1 XOR B1 A1 XOR B1 into A0 B0 plus there's a last term that is coming up that is A2 XOR B2 A1 XOR B1 A0 XOR B0 times the carry in that is the key see now you can see that this whole equation for c2 has no c1 and has no c0 it does not depend on the previous carry only it depends upon the first carry which is the input very similar to this we can write c3 c4 and so on so every term you can try to write it in this case right so we can try to represent the whole concept of representation of the carry calculation without using the previous values of the carries. Okay, now let us try to write the terms like this. So, if so, so for every carry, I can write this if. Say, I'm going to write the G term. So, G naught is equal to, it is, okay, I can, I can write it this way. I'll try to write, if for kth adder, for kth adder circuit, I have the term like this. Let's denote, uh, for kth order, let, we denote it gk. gk is equal to it's the product of the inputs that is ak into bk. Okay, and there is another term pk, let's define that is nothing but ak xor with bk. So it's because you can see every term has that, right? So a1 c1 has a1 b1 a1 xor b1, right? So that's why I'm trying to represent it in this fashion. So this implies now. So using this concept, I can write it in this way. Therefore, this implies C naught can be calculated as. So in order to calculate a C naught. You have to use G naught plus P naught times the C, whereas C1 can be calculated as G1 plus P1 times G naught plus P1 P naught times C, and so on. And since I have written a C2, I'll write C2 as well. So C2 can be written as the G2 plus this is. P2 G1 plus P2 into P1 into G0 plus this is P2 P1 P0 times C. So you can see that the previous carries are not used at all. So we are simply trying to write the whole function by simply calculating the the product terms P and uh, uh, sorry AK BK as GK and AK XOR BK as the PK. So all the previous cases will have the P1, P0, P2, P3, etc. They are available with this. So simply we can write, uh, write them, calculate them, and we can substitute here to get the answer. Okay, now let us say how do you calculate the 
carry look ahead concept right so let's do this so in case of a carry look ahead this thing so we first will draw the partial CLA that is carry look ahead structure okay so this is how it's going to be used so we have three bit adder structure to be drawn first all right so let's draw let's assume that this is a three bit adder now this itself will be placing it all over again okay so this is the second copy of that and this is the third copy of that. so each uh, block is assumed to be let's assume that it's a three bit adder with the carry look ahead structure so i know that the carry in comes to this now same carry i need to place from here to there so this carry i'm going to place between these two blocks okay then the final one will generate a carry out like this so if you call this is the c everything is a three bit structure so this will be the input carry will denote as c in now we have say three possible inputs so this one two and three so three bits will come so this corresponds to the sum yes not s1 s2 so the carry that goes out will be c2 right so this is three bit carry look ahead so this is also going to be a three bit carry look ahead so i have to provide the inputs uh, sorry this is the output the sum three bits right so you have three sums coming up so this is s3 s4 and s5 then you have another three bit carry look ahead so the c2 came c3 c4 c uh, c5 will be generated from here so this generate is ci okay so these are the possible inputs so s3 this is s4 uh, sorry s5 then i have to write s6 s7 s8 so c8 comes from the other side so that is why this is called as a partial structure now what will be present inside each of these blocks that's what we are going to look now so i'm going to call that diagram as the basic Three bit C L A seven. So one block inside that what we have we are going to see. Okay. That means so this will be a single block. Right? So we'll write a single big block here. Okay, in this,
so we have three bits of addition that is happening so we'll divide this into three different parts separately okay so this first block second block and the third block. so here you develop the the carry ahead logic so this means once you have the carry you can directly calculate the sum right so here you calculate the logic of sum once again another logic of sum i need three sums that's why you have to repeat this three times logic of sum so how do you calculate this i need the inputs to be provided first right so let's say one input is this then that's for input number two another input Okay, so in the next part, so we'll be drawing, given the inputs. Okay, so the inputs are like this. Okay, so let's copy this and we'll be placing this over here. And we need few more arrow marks to be drawn for the next input. Okay, so that is, this is the input arrow. So you can write, this is one for A and one for B. So I can write any a value here. So let's denote it as a n. This is b n. So this will be the next number. So a n plus 1. This is b n plus 1. So this is a n plus 2. And this will be b n plus 2. Right. Now the carry in will come from this. And the same thing will work. It look like you were previous carry. So what we do now, so we'll give this carry as input to this stage. The same thing will go in as the previous carry. Right, so this can be carry in or this is C n minus 1. If it is a first stage, this looks like a C in for you, otherwise this is a previous carry. So the final stage after this, what goes out, this is the arrow mark for that. So we'll write, this is the output and we call it as C n plus 2. Because C n minus 1 comes in, the C n plus 2 will go out because there are three bits to be added. So in addition to this, we have the sums available at the output. So this is the first one. And uh, this is the second one. And this is the last one. 
So you can see this is S n plus 2, this is S n plus 1, and this is S n. Now, so we had a bigger block, we divide that into a smaller block. So each of the block will be like this. Now I have to check what is present inside individual logic of sum that needs to be found out because without that there is no meaning for this whole segment okay so now what we do we'll write the circuit of the required sum block what is there inside each of the sum block? okay so that is the logic of sum so this was used in the previous case but we have not seen what is there as an input for each one of them right so we will be using see there is a n available there is b n available so this will be both of these will go as input to an xor gate because we know that xor gate is the standard cell for the adder block okay so these are the two inputs we provide to this now this output output of uh, the xor gate will go to one more xor gate Okay, so here you can see that one this output goes as input to this one one of the input. At the same time, the second the next input is going to come from the main input itself. So this input is the either the carry in or the carry C in minus one. So I can write C in or this is C n minus one. So these are the inputs and uh, finally you get the S n from this. So what we get here. This itself is the S N. So some you are going to get it in this fashion. Now, so it means I also have another part that is left in the carry look head concept. That is, what is there inside this block, right? Because you see, you need a carry look head block. So this block we have seen what is inside. So I also have to do the calculation and show what will be present inside the carry look ahead logic. So that is our next part that is coming up now. So we'll draw another diagram that corresponds to what is called as the four bit CLA unit. So let's draw the block corresponding to this. So a CLA unit will take the following things as input. Okay, so it's a four bit, so I have to have these many inputs. This is one, two,
six. Eight. Okay, so the inputs are so the starting on the first one. This is P naught G. You get P one G one, P two G two, P three G three. So the input there is another input that is given as given to this spring block that will be the C E. Right, so the basic requirement is that it's going to produce the three different terms. This is C1, C2, and C3. Right, and also it is going to generate two more outputs that is uh, that will be used in the next stage. So those are, one is here, and one more here. Okay, so let's give the, let's denote this is pi, and let me write this is gamma. So I get the carries generated, carry look here, C2, C1, and C0. So this is the carry look ahead unit or the cell, right? Here you can see that we have written the uh, two terms. One is pi. So pi is nothing but it's a product of p3 into p2 into p1 into p0 times ce. Whereas the gamma is equal to g3 plus this is p3 g2 plus p3 p2 g1 p3 p2 p1 and p0 okay all together it uh, these are these signals that is pi and gamma will be produced by the uh, carry look ahead unit which is available here. 